Welcome to my channel, All for Health with the Jane family. We are still on the AKA Tips murder case. Uh, family, what I would like to say about this case is the state, uh, who is the prosecutor, together with the investigating officers, they have done a splendid job when it comes to this case. You know, they did their homework thoroughly before they could you know arrest the, the seven accused people and another thing that i like more when it comes to this case is how the magistrate conducts it you know this thing of his of uh, uh, guiding them using questions he asks them questions to to guide them on what is important for the case and uh, this is going to shorten the time to be spent on this case. Because when we come to the main trial, already uh, most of the things, the, the magistrate will be having an idea where these people are going. You know, I like it very much. And it's, it's helping even uh, uh, the accused persons, much as it's not interpreted yet, Maybe they will interpret when it comes to the main trial. But I believe it's going to help them because at the same time, immediately they understand what is it that we're talking about and where does it go. And it will help the defense as well because the defense will be able to strategize there and there. So uh, I, I don't prefer it when the magistrate just keeps quiet and uh, one person will talk and talk and talk, even where we do not understand. Everyone is quiet listening to this person. But this way, how he does it, I personally prefer it. Because, you know, he's taking us along. So we are able to understand what is happening in the case. So in this uh, particular video, we are talking about, or maybe rather, let me say, the prosecutor is giving us, you know, a report on the guns that were used, uh, whatever form of evidence they have, even though much as it's not a main trial. So he cannot give us all the information, but he's trying to summarize, sum it up. What is it that... Um, the information they have at the same time um, uh, at the same time motivating that the magistrate mustn't give these people uh, bail so and the, the defense is there listening defense is there preparing themselves to come answer as well respond to whatever that the prosecutor is saying so family let's watch and listen to this if, if clip or maybe video rather where the prosecutor is explaining about the guns that were used in this killing of aka and his friend tips so let's listen family what you normally loosely say spend bullet or spent cartridges were found of a certain kind of a firearm, nine millimeter cartridges. That is a proven fact. The accused evidence is led that he does not possess a firearm license capable to fire those cartridge cases. He does not have any firearm license for a pistol. Therefore, there's evidence of eyewitnesses that are saying, on a specific day, I saw X firing shots at the deceased. Those proven facts then say, at the time when X was firing the shots, he had a firearm in his hand. And the farm is capable of firing the shots insofar as the farm controls it is concerned because we have a person who's dead. That person died as a result of multiple gunshot wounds, showing that the firearm that he had at the time when he was firing the shots 
kill the deceased. So the only inference is that farm was in a working condition insofar as it complies with the Farm Controls Act. Those are the proven facts. What other inference can the court draw? Only one. At the time when you fired the shots, in view of the fact that you are not in possession of a firearm license, that firearm, regardless whether it's recovered or not, that firearm on that day, at that specific moment, you were not in lawful possession thereof. That is inferential reason. That is what Tabashe is saying. Putting it into our facts here, we have evidence of two firearms that were used. We have recovered one, we have not recovered the other. But on inferential reasoning, we will say the second firearm, because it killed the second deceased, and the person who will be alleged to be the person carrying that firearm is, doesn't have a license to possess that firearm. The second person killed the first deceased. Which firearm we found on actual number three's possession? He does not have a firearm for that license. Neither the person we're alleging fired the shot has a firearm license for that specific firearm because we have it to say that even the serial numbers were fired off. Those will be the proven facts during trial, which will then show that at that time, those two firearms were not lawfully possessed. We then jump to joint possession. But this is all the worship for the trial court to decide. It's just to highlight why we're saying there is case law supporting conviction on those kind of cases. Exhibit G explains clearly that there was an arrangement for people to go and collect the tools, if I can use that loose word. Which tools were going to be used to kill the deceased. In particular, disease number one. Those tools were indeed used. We've got a CCTV footage showing people firing shots at that crowd. The two deceased died as a result. We're saying the evidence shows that the tools were brought back to the persons who gave it, who gave it in the first place. Hence, in April, it was found in position of actress number three. We have evidence that says he made arrangement for it to be given to the co actress and those that are in, in Switzerland, used at which brought back. Therefore, the trial court will have to decide whether the first and the second requirements of the joint position in this instance is applicable. But that is for the trial court. But prima facie, Everybody knew we are going to Umlazi to collect the firearms that we are going to use to kill the deceased because you have been contracted to kill the deceased. Whoever has it will have to collect it, have it on our behalf. Use it, kill the deceased on our behalf. Therefore, we'll take it back. That is for the trial court to decide, but prima facie, the evidence so provided proves joint possession. Therefore, it's our submission that the submission by my learned friend that because there might be duplication of charges and the, the charges might not be proved by the evidence lacks merit and should be dismissed. Delays. If one understands the words of Judge Snyders, who I happen to have appeared before, whilst I was still in the Johannesburg court, is that after the arrest, after the arrest, the undue delay might cause or might be taken into consideration so far as um, bail is concerned. Warrant of Sapile is clear on Exhibit G and G1. We took time to investigate this matter up to an extent that when the matter was at an advanced stage of the, of, of the investigations, 
we took a decision to arrest. Naturally or consequentially, when persons are arrested, certain evidence comes up, for example, during the bail applications. Even though we are saying, as indicated in Exhibit G, that we're still following the money and other monies and all of that, we have, we have indicated that what is it, but we are at an advanced stage. That, will, that may lead to certain arrests of certain people, but we should not lose sight of the fact that during the bail application itself, certain evidence crops up. Which evidence one must follow? I will make an example. We have alleged that during our investigation, we did not find any form in whatever manner of <laughs> evidence supporting the payment of 800,000 to applicant number four. We have not found it. We are told, I'm still going to argue that point at later stage. We are told that it's a business transaction, nothing more. But I'll argue, I'll argue that later. What kind of business transaction? What is that you did? We have, we have investigated that. We said we cannot find anything. Now, somebody says something during the bail application. Statements are being brought from certain people who are not even accused before court. Brought into the, into the form. The point I'm trying to make, Your Worship, is it is no, a known fact that a matter is investigated up to the judgment stage because things do grow up, grow up. But all we are saying is, insofar as to try not to delay these proceedings, the state took its time to investigate. Your Worship can see the amount of evidence, the analysis and everything that has been done by the investigating team up to this far. Therefore, the issue of the delay should not be seen as per Snyder's judgment, because Snyder says, you, you immediately arrested, and now you want to prolong. We, we did not do that. We first investigated, arrested, and no, we are not going to prolong the investigations because we have done most of it before the arrest. But so the concern, the concern that has been raised is that uh, after judgment in this matter, this matter cannot be sent to the High Court or to the forum where it will be held. Definitely, Your Ship. As I said, we never, we never, we never fold our arms and said we are done. We said there's some money that we need to follow off other monies except this one. We have the money that we are going to follow. We do an analysis of that. And on top of that, there's evidence in this bail application. We do not want to see, find ourselves at trial to say, but we never followed up, but we told you to do the bail application. This is the situation. But is that going to be prolonged? No. But are you in a position to give us an indication, more or less, how long the remaining or the outstanding investigation is going to take? Your Worship, we are at the stage where we can say, at least from now we are in May, by, by, by the fourth or fifth month from today, we will be in a position to say we can say the trial date. Four to five months from now, basically. Family looking at the amount of information that has already been acquired in this court, uh, the amount of work the prosecution in this court has done, you know, it is clear this case is not going to take very long, uh, the same as what is happening in the Senzo Meiwa murder trial. We hope that this one is going to be quick, uh, at most, when you look at this case, I don't think it will take more than five years for it to be finalized because already they have everything at hand except, you know, for some few uh, investigations that are still uh, on, on, the, on the way. So once they're done with that, more people maybe will be arrested 
and uh, once more people are arrested, the case may be finalized. Another thing is those that are in Eswatini, once they come, then this case is going to run family. And we hope to see it finalized very soon. Family, we are going to meet again on the 15th as the case is being postponed to the 15th of May. So then we will hear from there because I think on the, from the 15th, the judge will be giving his ruling on um, the decision that he has made uh, in terms of giving or not granting these accused people uh, bail. So we will hear from him from the 15th of May. Family, thank you very much for watching this video to this point. Do not forget to like it. Like it, it's very important. And subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I love you, family. Thank you. Bye.